Electrical. So what do we mostly think of as electrical when somebody talks about uh, being an electrician? Is it just panel wiring? Or is it just, I should be able to wire many different things in the field? It's the second. You know, you should be able to, at some point, while you're being an apprentice, uh, people are going to look up to you and they're going to think that you can wire pretty much anything. That's why you're called an electrician. We know what to do with wires and we know how to make things work. It's a little bit more than that though. So in this uh, discussion today, I just want to talk about neatness and uh, things being done right the first time so that you don't have to do it twice. So let's take a look at this panel. First of all, this panel, we can learn a lot about panels because the National Electrical Code Book talks about panel boards in Article 408. And Article 110.12 in the code book talks about how things should be done in a neat and workmanlike manner. So there's a lot that we can really uh, talk about with panel boards in Article 408, but let's first look at neatness. As you can tell, uh, you may not know the difference between a, a crappy panel and a really nice panel, but this is panel is a very nicely done panel. If I come in very close, you can see how the wires for the most part, every little kink has been stretched out of them and they're tied in very, very neatly. If we get down to these arc fault breakers, they come with their own little special uh, swirly wire that you can't really make it look neat unless you have a panel designed for that. But in either case, this panel on both sides, the wires are tied in very, very neatly. The feeders that come into the panel are also tied in nicely. And then if we look up into where the wires come through their connectors, these are also dressed and stripped very uh, consistently and groomed very consistently. Matter of fact, another code article is you should have at least a quarter inch of sheath coming through the connector as it emerges through that fitting. And that does that. It's a quarter inch, maybe a little more. But basically it's code. It's all done neatly. Even the wires that come out of the top of the panel are done neatly. So why am I bringing up this discussion? Well, everything that we do in the electrical field requires wires, circuits, and code. So I'm going to show you something else about this uh, rolling wall, if you will. I'm going to kind of stand back and you can see this is meant to teach you guys something. It's on wheels. It could be rolled into a classroom. It could, it's very uh, education friendly. And what you're looking at here is what wiring should look like in the walls, in a residential wall. So inside these residential walls, you've got Romex cable with plastic boxes. And we've got a variety of different kinds of circuits that we wire in the trade. And I'm going to start off with this first one. It's basically a single pole switch. And it turns on a light. No big deal. Then we have another circuit where we have a white wire re-identified with black tape. It's code. And once again, I will show you that code in a second. It's actually up here. 200.7C lets you know when you can re-identify a conductor with black tape. And this will turn the light on too. It's just another legal way of wiring a circuit. Then we have what we call Turning on lights for multiple locations, we have a three-way, a four-way, and a three-way. And we're able to turn this light on from three different locations. Circuits that you're going to learn how to wire when you come into lab. We also have another kind of circuit that's called the ground fault circuit interrupter circuit. This particular receptacle becomes protected by this receptacle. And we'll show you how to wire that when you get to lab. It's called line and load. But anyways, when this thing is on, I could uh, have an inexpensive receptacle be protected by ground faults as long as that circuit goes through this receptacle. And then we have another circuit where we have switch-controlled receptacles. It's called the switched outlet. And once again, this is code. We're allowed to do this according to 210.70A1, exception 1. I'm not going to go into all the codes that are on this wall. But I want to give you brand new guys an idea of what wires should look like when they're in the walls, how neatly they're arranged. Notice the cable is exactly in the middle of the stud. Notice the placements of the staples. 
Everything is neat. Everything is orderly. Notice the different application of a, what's called a cable stacker. So we can run these wires nice. And then you've got another application where some people will choose to put two wires under a staple. If it's listed to be able to do that, you can do that. And now we kind of ponder around and we get a full scope of, it's not just wires that we're dealing with. Look at the code. Everything that's in those frames are code applied situations. So let's come around this rolling wall and now we'll look at the code applied items in metal framing. Not only are we looking at things that are neat and workmanlike, we're looking at the different pieces and parts that are used in metal framing. We've got different items here, far side box supports, We've got MC cable, we've got CJs, which are, we call them, they're, it's basically an MC strap. We've got a bunch of new articles that are over here that apply mostly to the uh, metal uh, framing. We've got neat and workmanlike manner for switchings. We've got box fill, which is another code thing that you all have to know. And, uh, you know, just always remember that everything we do has our, 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 our signature on it our footprint. Your neat and workmanlike manner goes a long ways in the trade. So if you want to know what good electrical work looks like, well you got to ask your instructor and you got to understand that even if it's neat, even if it works, it still doesn't mean anything without the code. So I hope you understand the purpose of this video is to make sure that when we're doing our hands-on work, we apply the code, we apply neat, beautiful quality work, and then when the electrical inspector comes, he sees your beauty, and he, then he understands that you know the code. And that's our goal, is to pass inspections. So hopefully you got a little bit out of this video, and uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Thanks.